Steve. <laughs> no, no, it's not you. I was uh, thinking of a joke I heard earlier. Look, there are all sorts of blogs out there, even some from Android fanboys who praise you and thank you for your innovation. I have neither for you. As far as I see it, you didn't innovate much. You just took ideas that were already out there that were either free or fairly inexpensive and made people pay for them. You didn't innovate with iTunes. You took internet piracy and made people pay for it. You didn't innovate with the iPod. You took MP3 players and made people pay enormous amounts for them. You didn't innovate with the iPhone. You took smartphones and made it flashier so people would pay extraordinary prices, and so on. All the while, you locked down this technology so that people could only use it as you saw fit, so that they would buy the next product that they could have done with the last product they just bought, but you wouldn't let them do that, which makes people buy the next overpriced piece of crap you came out with because they couldn't do what they wanted to do with the first overpriced piece of crap you came out with. You know, I read an article that praised you for noticing the wrong shade of yellow on Google's iPhone icon. You called them on a Sunday to fix it. But I have yet to read an article that recalls the time that you completely f***ed up the iPhone 4's antenna and insisted everybody was holding it wrong. And that's the moral of the news this week. Steve Jobs did for innovation. If he should be praised for anything, it should be on his powers of persuasion. He persuaded people to pay outrageous prices for things. He persuaded people that they didn't need to explore the products that they bought beyond what he dictated. And especially, he persuaded everyone that a gangly old guy with a whiny voice was actually cool and deserved your praise at all. So there it is. Bye, Steve. Again, I'm Ace Renock, and this is XDA-TV.